G'day, Michael here. I've got a whole heap of printers running in the background, you can probably hear. But anyhow, further to my previous video on supports, there is um, some interesting information that's come through. A friend of mine on Facebook has shared this video from Joseph uh, Prusia. He shows how to do custom supports. Anyhow, I played a little bit more with it. You can, if you watch it yourself, uh, you can see how to create custom supports in sli uh, Slicer PE. Um, he goes through it very, very quickly. Um, but I played with it a little bit and found quite a bit more. Now, uh, it's a great video, great features. I'll just get that out of the road. Move it aside. Okay, so here we have a part that I've showed. Actually, I'll go back to the original view. Where I've showed my manual, well, the designed in supports. Now, that I think for a part you're going to come back to and repeat and repeat and repeat is by far the best way of producing supports because the support is with the design and you can design in the breakout how you like. Now this part breaks out very easily. Um, I might show, oops, let's arrange that again. I might show that in another video. But basically you press with your thumb and this piece comes out completely cleanly. Whereas a typical um, slicing package supports, you've got a bit of work to clean out the last little daggy loose ends. My um, this design just comes out clean. There is no cleanup inside the print whatsoever. It's just ready to go. Um, yeah, so if you design it yourself, you can be very uh, particular as to how it works according to your printing equipment. And the design uh, containing these supports means that you, you can't forget what you've got to do because uh, it's already in the design. So as soon as you go to slice, let's go to um, the preview. If we go through that, you can see the print has been made in such a way that that breaks out very easily. That's why the radius edges are Look, just um, there's a very small, very small point of contact here, which is just enough to hold the support in place well enough to be printed vertically. So it works very, very well. Just as a side note, on uh, the Sl Slicer Prusa Edition. You've got the ability to click on one single layer and work your way up and down through the print. So here we can see each layer to see any little detail about each layer without being confused about previous layers. Or we can turn that off, show the whole area and work our way up from the bottom to see if we want to start somewhere. So you can look at it from underneath to see how that will interact or anything else you need to look for. So there's, there's some quite handy little tricks here. Now, for some reason, and I haven't quite worked out why, if I leave this for a little while, I'll get a whole lot of tools to show whether there's uh, travel and so forth, rather like in Cura. So it's not as responsive in that regard, but there's actually a lot of uh, features that have been added to the Prusa edition of Slicer that is not in the regular Slicer package. Anyhow, what... Uh, Joseph Prusa was showing with the custom supports is actually really cool. If we go back to the original view and just double click on the object, you get this window here. Now, it normally is much smaller. On, let me get that size down. Normally it's something like that the way it pops up. So I've just enlarged the screen so I can see more of the part more specifically. Now you can actually load any part you like and use that as a support enforcer or a, what do they call it? Uh, I'll just load one. Uh, Depth spacer, okay. Okay, so that part now, depth spacer, I'm going to change it to being a support enforcer, but you can also use it as a support blocker. So you can create a design of any shape you like that blocks an area of support. You can also use generic parts. I'm going to make this a support enforcer, so you see how that works, and we can place it by moving around left and right and forward and backwards and up and down. So let's just swing around, see what that looks like on the other side. So you can see here, it, what I've found is it will not generate support material if there's no need for support material. Like in this area here, it may generate a small amount of support for this hole. Uh, let me just go back to the um, slicer itself. So I'll just uh, go OK here. You can see that part's been sat there. So I'll click on Slice now, click on the preview, and you can see 
there's a tiny bit of support generated where both this design needed support or could use support and my shape interacted so although back back on the preview we've got all this shape here it only generates the support where the two would interact okay so I'll go back to the original again double click now I'll move it across to an area where it might generate more support probably so inside that space I'll move it a bit further so that there's a fair bit of the design where both this volume and that volume would interact where this part could possibly need some support so let's go OK there and let's see what that does preview and you can see it's generated support where those two parts where this part here could have needed support and the other part that we use to see support enforcer also presented itself so you can very cleverly design specific supports to do anything you like using any shape you like so that's, that's a very cool feature so now um, with this we can do very 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 customized supports so much so that you can create a design that is your support um, so the custom supports now in uh, the preacher edition of Slicer is actually, to my mind, about as good as you can possibly do slicing. I mean, uh, connecting a, a support, I guess you can do that another way. Let's just create a manual support on the spot. So I'll double click on that object. We get this business. We load a generic. Let's go cylinder. And I don't know, radius uh, 8 millimeters. I make it, I don't know, 100 millimeters tall. Okay. And that's placed there, and we're going to call it a. No, no, that's not it. Got to click on it, land the cylinder, support enforcer. Okay, so let's just see where it actually is. Move it a bit left and right, it changes colour on moving. So let's say we want a bit of support right there. So you can move around and see yourself. So I've got two of those uh, supports. Placed. Let's see how that goes. And again, here's going back to the original 3D preview. Let's get it to slice now. I've noticed the slicing on the preacher edition is very fast. I suspect it's using the graphics adapter because it's really just does it in no time. Um, yeah. Okay. So there's the supports that didn't happen here. Okay. So what are my rules that I've set in this, the support? Later. Something here that should be. I think supporting something. But it may have decided that based on the print settings that it's not going to generate support. So let's just have a look at that. Threshold. The, it's important not to have the auto generated supports turned on, but I'm trying to work out why it hasn't engaged that support. Double click. Maybe that angle has decided it doesn't need support. So let's move it somewhere else. Say there. So here's. No, missed the part. Okay, so we've got that there. Let's see how that works. Slice now. And we've got our support here. Make that 3D preview. So that cylinder there has generated support material. This odd shape has generated support material. Go back to our preview. Okay, but you can see it doesn't create support material unless there's a reason to do so. So hopefully that takes some of the puzzle out of this business. Yeah, very cool. But again, um, this particular design, I don't actually need this support. But it was just something I thought I'd show in a video here to explain the various things about it. Now, obviously, I haven't used this a lot yet, but I just by having played with it, found out some very cool things.
Well, I guess that's it. Feel free to like, share, subscribe, ask a question, leave a comment. Bye for now.